Does this little tiny piece of plastic have any impact at all on your flash photographs? I'm gonna talk about it on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey there everyone, welcome back. Here I am as always answering your photography questions. Don't forget to go to askdavidbergman.com. Ask your own photo questions right there on the site. I just might pick it to answer here on a future show. Also, you're already watching on the Adorama YouTube channel. If you're not already a subscriber, go ahead and click that button down below. Make sure you also hit the little bell icon. You'll get notifications as soon as new photo shows come out all week long and you don't wanna miss that. Today's question was sent into the site from Ronald J and he wants to know, I've heard other photographers say that if you use one of those small plastic diffusers on your flash, it will soften the light. I've tried it and haven't noticed a difference. Am I using it wrong? Ronald, I'm actually here to tell you those other photographers are the ones who are actually wrong. Well, sort of, all right. So let me explain what's happening here. First, what we need to do is define what we mean by soft light versus hard light. Now, it's not like there's a definitive line between soft and hard light, but there are two things that we're looking at to determine that particular characteristic of the light to see if it's considered softer or harder in our photographs. Those two things are the darkness of the shadows and the smoothness of the transitions. Okay, let's look at this picture. Now, because I had the light up and over camera left, the shadows are falling down onto the opposite side of Joey's face. Now, as for the quality of the light, there are very dark shadows on the side of her nose and on the, basically on the side of her whole face. Also, the transition, or when we go from the dark areas to the light areas, is quite harsh and contrasty. That creates strong lines down the side of her face and blown out specular highlights on her forehead, nose, and lip. This is pretty hard light and it's not particularly flattering on a person. Now let's look at this image and it's completely different even though the light is coming from exactly the same direction. The shadows are much lighter, not super dark like that other frame. Look at the side of her nose and the shadow side of her face and how much lighter it is compared to that other image. And as for the transitions from dark to light, it's much more gradual. So there are fewer specular highlights and no harsh lines. The light is much smoother all the way around. That, my friends, is soft light and it's way more flattering when you're photographing people. So now that we know what soft light is, how do we actually create it? Well, the rule is that the bigger the relative light source, the softer the light. And I always say a relative size because it also depends how close the light is to your subject. As the light moves in closer, it appears to get bigger from your subject's point of view. And the further away it is, the smaller it seems to be, no matter how big it actually is in real life. Let's take the sun, for example. It's the biggest light source in our galaxy, but it's crazy far away, so it looks super small. If the sun was right up against the earth, it would look massive to us, and it would be a beautiful, soft light source. Of course, we'd all be burned to a crisp, but maybe we'd have time to actually take some great pictures before then. Now, the flash from a speed light like this is a pretty small light source, even if it was up close. The traditional way to make it bigger is to use a modifier like a photo umbrella or a softbox. You can even shoot like into a big white scrim or off a reflector or even off of a white wall. The idea is for that small light to hit that big surface and spread out and then hit your subject from multiple angles. Sometimes we say that the light actually wraps around the subject because it's hitting more areas, but light doesn't really wrap because it only travels in a straight line, right? That's physics. But because it's coming from the middle and all all the way out to the edges, it's gonna hit more surface area than if it was only coming out of the center of that small speed light. Now, as for Ronald's question, some flashes come with a small plastic diffuser like this one, but you can also buy them separately. The Stofen Omnibounce is actually kind of the old school industry standard. It's been around a really long time. It costs about 10 or 15 bucks, depending on what flash model you're using. But there are also other brands now like this one uh, from Flashpoint that cost me nine bucks, right? So they all do basically the same thing. What they do is they bounce the light around a bit so the photons come out in all directions, right? All around the side and not just out of the front. Now, photographers often say that if you use this on your flash, it's gonna soften the light. I'll explain why they say that, but first I wanna show why they're technically wrong. You know by now that the only way to soften the appearance of a light source is to make it bigger. And this thing doesn't really make the flash head any bigger, right? From the subject's perspective, if you, I was photographing you, from your perspective, the light that's hitting you is still only coming from this very small area, even though it's also coming out the sides. So to prove this, earlier today, I took my mannequin friend into the backyard behind my office building, 
I'm using the Canon 5D Mark IV with the 100 millimeter macro, which is an, aw an awesome portrait lens. And I set up a speed light off to the side that I'm triggering wirelessly with the very simply named Canon STE3RT. That's sarcasm, by the way. I'm shooting at 100 ISO, 200th of a second, and at f4. Now, it was an overcast day, and without the flash, I've got no ambient light, as you can see. I want it that way so that we can really see what effect the flash is having on the image without the daylight having effect. Now, when I add in the bare speed light, you can see it creates very hard shadows on the side of the face and the nose, just like I'd expect from a small light source at that angle. And look at the shadow on the neck. The transition from light to dark is immediate, right? It's not gradual at all. That is what we consider to be hard light. So then what I did was I added that little plastic diffuser. Now adding anything that spreads the light means you're gonna have fewer photons going directly forward towards your subject. So you're essentially throwing away some light because it's going out, some of it's going out to the sides. Now I was shooting the flash on manual, so I just adjusted my power up one and a third stops in this case to compensate for the loss of light through the diffuser. Now, when you look at the image and compare it back to the first one, there is absolutely no difference in the quality of the light on the subject. Look at that next shadow. The diffuser hasn't had any effect. And because I had to raise my flash power, I've actually hurt myself a bit because I've slowed down my recycle time and I'm gonna get fewer flashes before my batteries die. If I really wanna make this light softer, I need to add a large modifier like a photo umbrella. If you look at this image, I bounce the light into the large 60 inch, 60 inch soft lighter umbrella. And even without the outer diffusion, because it's so large, you can see a, a big difference in that neck shadow. The transition is so much smoother and more gradual. Now, when using a big modifier, of course, you're still gonna lose some light, but it's worth it because the relative size of the light is so much bigger in relation to the subject compared to that bare speed light. I think that the softness almost makes lighting less noticeable since it's not so harsh. And someone looking at your photos is gonna focus more, pun intended, on your subject rather than being distracted by that harsh, hard light. As an aside, by the way, this isn't how I'd usually shoot a portrait outdoors. I'd actually balance the light with the daylight, the flash with the daylight, by slowing down my shutter speed and raising my ISO a little bit. That way the ambient light fills in the shadows more, giving me an even softer look. But that's probably another video for another day. This question was only about the light coming from the flash through the, through the diffuser, so I wanna show what that does. Okay, so now if that diffuser doesn't actually soften the light, why do so many photographers say that it does? Well, it can make softer light, but it's not because of the direct light coming out of the flash as I've just shown. What it is, is it's because of the light that bounces around inside the room where you're shooting. Outdoors, like I was doing, there's nothing close to bounce off of, right? The stray light is just gonna go away and you're gonna lose it forever. So I then brought my mannequin friend back inside and photographed it here in the studio. Now without the diffuser, it does exactly what you'd expect. It creates hard, harsh light. But when I add in the flashpoint diffuser, now the light is coming out in all directions and bouncing off of the white walls and the ceiling in this room. That reflected light is gonna fill in the shadows just a little bit. It's kind of subtle, but it's gonna fill it in, giving the impression of softer light. It doesn't really do anything for the transitions from light to dark, but it's still a bit more pleasing than that bare flash head. And a lot of photographers like to use this because it's just such a simple way to, uh, to add that onto your flash. It's really easy to do without having to bring big modifiers, especially if you're an event photographer that has to do run and gun situations. But really an even better way to use this is to point the flash upwards towards the ceiling and bounce the light from there. By adding the diffuser, that forces a little more light to go forward while still giving me that soft overhead wash that fills in the shadows. Remember, it won't do anything for the transitions without making the light any bigger, right? If you don't make the source bigger, the transitions aren't going to change. And also, if you're shooting in a room where the you have to be aware of the color of the walls and the ceiling, so it's gonna, because the light is gonna, because it's bouncing off of all that, it's gonna pick up some of that color. So white works best, and you won't get much light at all if the room is actually a really dark color or you're in a big black room, right? So what's the final verdict on these small flash diffusers? Well, if you're outdoors or in a big room like a giant wedding hall or a chapel where the walls and ceiling are too far away to bounce off of, then this thing won't do you any good. It actually hurts you by eating up some of your flash power without giving you any benefit. It's not softening the light at all. 
But if you're indoors and have white walls or a white ceiling that are in relatively close, then a small flash diffuser can be an easy way to soften the light, especially if you point it mostly up to bounce off the ceiling. So Ronald, I hope that answers your question and helps a few of you out there as well. Don't forget, remember, if you have your own photo question, go to askdavidbergman.com, uh, fill out the form on there, and maybe I will answer it on a future show. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. That's always appreciated. If you have questions or thoughts about it, comment below. I'll be in and out of there so I can answer those. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe. I'm back here with a new episode of Ask David Bergman every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern. Hope to see you here. Back next time, right here on Ask David Bergman.